Welcome to It's Personal, a show exploring what makes you, you. You've always probably considered your birthday a pretty unique trait of your personal life. And that's true, because it kinda is. But at the same time, you also share that birthday with millions and millions of other people. So in a way, it's not unique at all. One fun thing I like to do at parties is go around and collect data from all my friends to see if any of them share the same birthday. One, because I'm a pretty fun guy and I know how to party. But two, because it's a fun way to test the birthday paradox. Observe. Hey Weston. Yeah. When's your birthday? April 15th. April 15th. Does anybody else here have an April 15th birthday? I do. Oh. oh. Pretty weird, huh? Here's how this works. The birthday paradox refers to the likelihood of two people within a random group sharing the same birthday. Given the fact that there are 366 possible birthdays, including February 29th, Sup. it doesn't seem all that likely. But in a room of 23 people, there's actually more than a 50% chance that two of those people share the same birthday. If that seems high, consider this. In a group of 23 people, there are actually 253 possible chances for a match. So, it might not make sense to your brain, but that doesn't really matter because, you know, math. Okay, makes sense, right? Kinda? Kinda? Alright, hey, let's, let's test it out on the street. I'll be right back, guys, alright? I was gonna eat that. So, we're out here on the street to put the birthday paradox to the test. By the time we hit 23 people, there's a 50.7% chance that two of them will have the same birthday. Are we gonna be that lucky? I don't know. Let's find out. All right, so here's our first person. Your name is? Bob. Bob, when's your birthday? January 30th, 1959. Now, since you're the first person, there's no chance of you winning this. That's okay. When's your birthday, Casey? November 30th. No match. November 26th. Ooh, no match. October 15th. That's not a match. Still don't have a match, but it's pretty good. We're getting there. Hello there, sir. What's your name? Odin. Cool name. Odin, when's your birthday? Uh, June 21st. No way. September 26th. Not a match. April 15th. I don't think so. January 11th. Not a match. Here we go. August 25th. No match. January 23rd. No match. September 18th. No match. Rod, when is your birthday? My birthday is January 4th. Ooh, no match. I'm sorry, so sorry, life. Rod. Well then, I guess this is goodbye. It is. Oh, oh. September 24th, October 31st, May 8th. Uh-uh. Nope. Ooh. None of these are matches. Uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. All right. I'm here with... Jackie. And Fernando. And what do we got for birthdays? October 31st. I think October 31st is a big winner. Yay! I think it's a winner. <laughs> Let's double check. Jackie. That's a birthday match. It's a winner! Spooky Halloween bonus. I got a special treat for you guys. This is the best day ever. <laughs> so there you go. There's your nice Halloween thank cake. You. Guys, thank you for thank you for being born. So there you have it. 16 people, and we found two wonderful souls with the same birthday. On Halloween of all days. How spooky. So the birthday paradox, it's a real thing. So there you have it. 16 people, and we found a match. There's only about a 28.05% chance of that happening. And it only gets higher from there. If we talked to 60 people, there would have been about a 99% chance of finding a match. Pretty crazy, guys, huh? Yeah. Hey, Shane. Hey. Are you the youngest of your siblings? Yeah, how'd you know? Well, the youngest children have been shown to be risk takers. Like, they'll take a cake right out of a party and not bring it back. Oh, so yeah, I guess you can probably blame that on my brother then. Well, before you do that, I want to know if these birth order studies carry any weight. So I got some siblings to play a game show. Let's see how well they do. Are you guys ready to play? Yeah. 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 Studies suggest which sibling is more social, suggesting they might be better at parties. 
most yeah. social. Okay, fine. They used to tell me when I was three I would grab people at weddings and just dance with them yeah. out of nowhere. <laughs> Did that last week too. <laughs> oh, Ooh, we all said oldest. Taking that party <laughs> title. Okay. I'm not saying I'm the life of the party in all situations. <laughs> well, you do love a good party. I do love parties. So it's actually middle children. No one guessed right. Oh, okay. Oh, you're more <laughs> so holding back on. Mm -hmm. A study found which sibling tends to be a perfectionist. I don't think we even have to discuss this one. No, we just all know. Want to say it all together? Ready? One, <laughs> two, two, three. Middle, middle. child. <laughs> <laughs> if the science is science, uh, trend this way. Ooh. What? We said that you did. Since when? <laughs> it's you. For instance, okay. you were cooking those like egg wraps from oh. that cookbook. Mm -hmm. She didn't get it right the first time. She made it the next day. Your plans to make uh -huh. it again. Yep, Emily, you guessed right. It is oldest children. Oh, you were right. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> Maybe I'm just trying to not be a perfectionist. Which sibling has been shown to be most empathetic of the family? Uh, How it is. For sure. I, I think that he's the most empathetic. <laughs> he knows it. That's true. <laughs> oh. oh. Well, I definitely think that Jessica is the most empathetic of all of us because you're very sweet and kind. You always send like a follow-up text. I sent you this emoji things on the text. Oh yeah, the yeah. emojis. I got those. Exactly. Yes, that's right. Younger children have been shown to be the most empathetic. So we can see the studies are kind of accurate. Our siblings, or our lack of siblings, they totally shape our lives. So maybe the majority of firstborns are all successful perfectionists, like myself, but that doesn't mean all oldest siblings are. Oh hey, guys, I got a joke for you. All right. What do professional NHL players and European youth soccer players have in common? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. January birthdays. Here. Check this out. Suppose you were born in January. That would mean your birthday would come just after the cutoff date for some sports. So if you were 15 on January 1st, you would play for the 15-year-old team, even if you were turning 16 on the second. Studies have shown that this age gap can give you an advantage because on average you're bigger and stronger than the younger competition. This is called the relative age effect. September is the cutoff date for most schools in the United States. So if you're born in September, theoretically you should be the best at sports. Actually, hold on a second. Does being born in September make you better at sports? I'm here at BuzzFeed to find out. Oh, you, know, you know what? Um, I certainly wasn't the worst. I wasn't interested in being the best. Patrick was bad at sports. Uh, I mean, kinda. I was kinda bad. Well, I first broke my nose while doing gymnastics, and then I broke it again because the basketball like hit me in the face in gym class. <laughs> Maybe I'm not as athletic as I thought I was as a kid. Yeah, I was usually pretty, pretty high up on the uh, skill level <laughs> scale. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to sit here and be like I was the best at sports, but I kind of was. In in high school, I was probably at like a four or five. In elementary school, I was probably at like a two or a three, but my heart level was at like a 10. Like I believed I could do anything I wanted. I was the uh, team captain of my high school tennis team. I was the team captain of my squash team. I made varsity on football. Uh, and I played, oh, I played rugby in college for a while too. I sent out a survey to BuzzFeed employees to see what's the highest sports team they ever played for. According to our study, most people quit after high school. But we actually found that there's three people here that played professional sports, and two out of those three people were born in October and November. So maybe your birthday does have an effect, but we don't know for sure. Ah, hey. Hey. Hey, so what if you're like born in July? Well, it's not really an exact science. I went to the Junior Olympics throughout high school for fencing. My birthday is August 10th, 1992. Look, if you want to play sports, then play sports. It doesn't matter if you're smaller than the competition. You can't let your birthday hold you back. So our birthdays shape us in a lot of ways that we never even thought. But our birth date doesn't define who we are. 
So really, it's just an excuse to hang out with friends and have a good time. So enjoy it. Anyway, that's been our show. Thanks for watching It's Personal. Bye. Bye. Get out of here.